Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Face in My Fear of Action Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Facing My Fear of Action. Recorded on the 24th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Yeah, how are we? Good. Energized after that talk. Energized after that talk. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, there's so much fear of emotion, huh? <laughs> Just uh, crazy. Mm. It's a crazy world we live in. It's a strange, strange world we live in, um, Uncle Jack. Okay, well, let's start on the fear of action Q&A first, if we can, So, rather than emotion. Um, so if we start with Elo up the back, Eloisa, thanks. Just had to check if I need to stand or not. <laughs> yep, good on you. Um, I feel like this is, and the fear of emotion is my blocks at the moment. And Sorry, this, this fear of action and fear of emotion? Yeah, I don't well, think so, Eloisa, but go on. <laughs> okay. No, hold on, hold on. All right, this is my question. Yeah. I can feel emotion on certain subjects that yep. I feel is, um, and I always feel better afterwards, always. Yep. Like, I know, like, I have growing faith in that. Then I get to, like, sidetracked. Yep. Like, there's certain actions that I wanted to begin to take, and there's certain things that I want to be doing. Yes. And what I'm noticing at the moment, the biggest problem, is that somehow I just get like sided. Like I don't, I, I suppose my question is, I don't want to keep doing that because it's really effing up my life. Yeah. Because I'm not getting anywhere and the real change isn't fully happening. Yeah. And I'm kind of stuck in this little crappy place yeah i feel that the two biggest issues for you are faith and and action faith and action yeah not emotion or or um truth truth you love truth i love truth yeah it's wonderful to speak with you because you're so open to it so um so lo you love truth so that's not much of a problem for you you're just hanging out for the truth every time every time it comes up so that's really good and you also let yourself feel when you feel right you don't always do it in your home environment yeah and that's because you're still sensitive to the projections coming around you from peter in particular to cause you to shut down you follow yes can i just ask this oh, so, so this finish. is an issue of you being afraid of well, how how the people around you will respond yes to you feeling emotion. So what I feel in you is that there's not a large amount of fear of emotion inside of you, but you are afraid of what others will think about you or act to how they will act towards you when you feel your emotion. And Correct. this causes you to lose your way. So you follow? Yes. It causes you then to, to forget what you started. Because I'm so worried about, about it is Pete. I'm so worried about... Primarily Pete, but also the kids. You're worried about both. But, but primarily Peter. Hold on, the kids. I hadn't considered that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid of how they're going to treat me. And you're afraid of how they're going to react if you feel something that might trigger them in some way. You, you're afraid of harming them. Correct, yeah. I am. Yeah, and you can't actually harm them by feeling your emotions. You can only harm them, harm them by not doing it. <laughs> yeah, and so that's another belief that I need to... Well, it's another at. thing that stops you from acting because you're worried about what other people think, worried about how other people will react. And so this is my biggest area now, and this is what's causing me to then just, like, basically not then take actions and correct, not take correct. everything else. Correct. All right. So a big issue for you is to not take action. The other a smaller issue is the faith that is building. You're doing a good job developing your faith and building your faith. And, but, but there are times when you don't let your faith carry you through to the end. Yeah. Yep. And that's what you were saying to Barb of I need to just hold on real strong to the things that have happened that are good. 
And that, and where you have, because you, you are one person who has changed quite significantly since I kn have known you. When I first met you, as I've said to you, you were one angry person, a uh, very angry person actually, yeah. and uh, the average person was quite afraid to be in your company. And you've changed quite substantially from that. So, so this is a good indication that you've changed, so you know what you've done to change, yeah. and that should help you maintain your faith for the future as well. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Good eye. If we go Diana down here and then Pierre over here. So with Pierre, if you lose your hand up, Pierre, so you can see you. <coughs> I just fairly recently um, have developed a bit of desire to take more responsibility for my rage and resentment towards men. Yep. Towards Alan. Yep. Who doesn't deserve it? <laughs> no. no. No, he doesn't. But though, so often I feel like he does. Yes, you know? I know you do. <laughs> and, um, and like just being more honest about that. Yeah. And so um, the, the actions I've been taking... Have, have men hurt you much in your life? I don't feel they have. No. You know, like... You're in really the same boat. Remember I talked to... Who was it? Yesterday... Um, Sherry, Sherry yes. and yes. and I mentioned Laura in this as well, and I mentioned Mel. Mel. Uh, remember that discussion? Oh, I know I'm one of them. Yeah, that yes, applies. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah. So just seeing, you know, the the real ugliness <laughs> yep. in myself. <laughs> yeah. And so. <laughs> What I've been doing is like when I've like noted and the just the the um the oh what do you call it? passive aggressive rage. Yeah, can I suggest yeah. this is more to do with emotion than with action? Okay, Diana. All right. Um, and maybe we can talk about it in the emotion section yeah. uh, rather than the action section. Sure. I feel I feel. Um, you, you're just internally, emotionally, you're justifying some negative actions. Yes. Right. Yes. And and what you've got to do is find out the real reason emotionally why you're justifying those particular actions, and and some of it's because you're lying to yourself about the source of the problem, and some of it's because of the issue with emotion. What kind of emotions are you trying to prevent? Okay. So perhaps what we need to do is raise the issue in the emotion Q and A. Can Thank we do that? You. Yes, I'd like to. So Thank remind you. me of that. Thank uh, thanks, Alan. Um, on the note of action, I've recently had more courage to take action when I'm getting a barrage of anger from Diana. Good on you. Good on you. This so is wonderful. I, yeah. I, <laughs> it's, 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 it felt so good to speak up for myself yeah. when for so long I hadn't with women. Yes, you know? yes. And that's really helped me. And I've noticed, I don't, this is the, one of the questions I wanted to ask is I noticed my law of attraction changing in other areas in my life because it was a big thing for me to have this courage to stand up for myself against women. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so my business has grown and I, I also have a less of a desire to go into town in Kingaroy and meet up with other DLP people yeah. to get an addiction to met. Can we define DLP? Is that Divine Love Path you were saying? It's an acronym. Sorry. <laughs> Any, anybody hearing it? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people uh, who say they're on the way. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Who Thank probably not? Should we say? Yeah. <laughs> Persons of significance and insignificance. I, <laughs> I, I found later on. <laughs> Because of my injuries. Yes. Yeah. So you would have been attracting these particular people through your injury. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the addictions noticed. that were going on with me and them. And, Correct. And it felt so yucky. Yeah. So this happened about six months ago. Yeah. But I really only noticed it because Di, Di and I went on our first holiday, if you like, <laughs> together. Yeah. Uh, um, Christmas time and now it's been wonderful I feel she's moved in after four years <laughs> um, but she's uh, she's worried about the anger now so. <laughs> but it's good we've got more bedrooms to decide whether we're going to sleep together or not <laughs> and um, so uh, I just feel I the action side of it I've taken more responsibility good on you yeah but I have this I still got this thing coming up that I don't have faith in that sometimes when I, I feel the anger coming from her that if i do anything it's actually going to improve the situation yeah so i'm a bit confused on that 
yep. side of it. So, and I think I'm just hitting that. How much faith do I have in God that if I keep standing up for myself that she's going to change when I feel that there's something in me that still hasn't changed yet? Does that sort of make any sense? Well, no, something has changed because now you realise the need. Before you were just like, oh, I've, you know, there's, a, there's some pretty uh, wild terms in Australia for this, for this problem, uh, which I probably won't repeat <laughs> in our presentation. But, but, you know, you have been definitely pandering to women yes. and definitely allowing women to run roughshod over you. Yes. And the decision to change is already something that's caught, that, that then will start allowing you to see the emotional reason why you've allowed this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you keep feeding the addiction, and this is a problem with feeding addictions, if you keep feeding them, you will never see the emotional reason why you do it. You have to actually stop an addiction before you can actually feel the underlying emotion that drove it. Right, and the majority of people I still see feeding addiction, and and then asking why they're not progressing. It's because if you keep feeding your addictions, you're never going to see the underlying emotion or feel the underlying emotion. Right. So, so the action that you've taken, you've taken some positive actions of no longer feeding your addictions with regard to women. Yes. Right. So yeah. you've believed yourself in the past to be a man who, you know, who's really good with women, and basically what that meant was you did anything they wanted. Yeah. And 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 which meant you actually get right run right, rough shot over. You know, like I feel like I've been in the boxing ring fifteen rounds with fifteen relationships. You have, you have, and some of them are real tough, eh? Real tough. Real, real tough. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you, you know, this is, this is good that you've now stopped feeding the addiction. The gloves are off now. <laughs> 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 no, it's a good feeling to stand up for yourself. You, sometimes you don't know what you've got inside you until you have a go, you know. That's right. And just, yeah. just praying about wanting to develop that courage. And, yeah. And it just came left field and I just noticed that I was doing it and Di noticed that I was doing it. And yeah. she was grateful that I was... Yeah, and that's, yeah. A, that's a good thing if your partner is, but if your partner isn't, then of course it usually means that you break up. But, yeah. but at the end of the day, it, it needs to be done either way. Yeah. Right, because otherwise you keep, you keep feeding. And remember, you're feeding your own addiction too here by stopping the, your, your own addiction, which is to pander to the woman in order to feel good about yourself yes. and in order to get a sexual response from them too. Definitely. You know, there's a lot about, a lot of men do it just for the sex, really. Um, so there's those two things that, that happen. You know, you want your worth validated by the woman wanting you sexually, and then you want your own worth is validated by the fact you're a nice guy, and, you know, doing what the woman wants. Why? Yeah. And that, then it brings a lot of confusion, doesn't it? It's like, I'm doing what the woman wants. Why is she so <laughs> upset with me still? <laughs> like, <laughs> I realise being a nice guy doesn't get me what I want really anyway. So. Well, the, you know, the reality is it's unfortunate nowadays, but the reality is unfortunately that that there is this attitude that if you're too nice, people will take advantage of you. To me, there's no such thing as too nice. To me, people taking advantage of you is the problem. And this is the thing you're starting to stop. Yes. The taking advantage of your niceness, if you like. Yeah. And this is a very important thing to stop because it, it actually is destroying your own worth by allowing it to continue. Yeah. yeah. So that's good actions there. But but you know, the feeling of the emotion, as you've said, hasn't yet processed through. But but by stopping the addiction, you will get to the emotion. Yes. Does that make yeah, sense? I, I feel I've just started into it. Yep. And and there's a lot more to go yet. Yeah, you your whole life has been governed by this. You, you, all of your relationship choices have been governed by this one or two basic emotions with women. And uh, once you address them, you're going to feel very different about yourself. And also, for the first time, be able to have a decent relationship with a woman rather than uh, a relationship where she has the power. Yes. Right. And I'm not suggesting you should have the power. I'm, I'm saying that there should be a power vacuum in a relationship. Mm -hmm. In other words, both of you should not be wanting power in the relationship. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Pierre. Um, Similar problem, Pierre. Yes, yes, but I feel I'm in a different place. Right. Uh, um, I feel I'm getting to the place you were getting when you were 33. Yeah. Um, 
And like I've been living a life of addictions and today I'm in uh, repressing my rage yeah. at the world, my parents, everybody. Yeah. And and so I'm I'm depressed uh, most of the time. And um I get to know that if I don't make the choice now, yeah. To get into my grief and and fear and take a different choice, it, it can be potentially thousands of years before I, I do it. Yeah. So, um, so can I make a few suggestions? F firstly, um, one thing that's really important is death is not an option. And I say that in all seriousness, actually, for you, because when you get depressed, the anger often drives you to the point where you feel like you want to suicide. And, and, it's, and if you just remind yourself that death isn't an option, from God's perspective, it's not an option. Feeling is the option. Right? So that, to me, that's an important decision. And perhaps the rest of the question needs to be answered in the emotion section, right? rather than in this action section. Because it really um, does apply to you then choosing, as we remember the diagram here, it's it you're currently still choosing to avoid your pain in particular your pain with women you're choosing to avoid it and and my suggestion is allow yourself to feel it without thinking that death is an option or the suppression of anger is an option because they're not real options do you follow me they're just ha self-harm options that's all they are you're better off choosing so this is where it means taking some action choosing to actually educate yourself about pain and, and allow yourself to feel emotional pain rather than rather than actually choose you know suicide or or depression depression is a choice to suppress the anger so at this stage you obviously believe that if you experience anger it's bad too but it's actually better to experience anger than it is to suppress it. You follow? Me? Yes. Yep. Yes. So this is something you need to allow yourself to do, and that's a, that again is a choice. You need to take action. So I, w I would set up my life environment where I've got a, a, a punching bag outside with a baseball bat, perhaps, where I can really and where I can yell and scream and, and just be let myself be angry without projecting it at anyone. Just be angry when I'm angry rather than trying to express my anger. And if you can't do that, allow yourself to work your way through the blockages to experiencing anger, which will all come from your childhood experience. You follow? So the childhood experience will, you know, there'll be times when you might have been angry where you were belted for being angry or whatever. You'll have to go back to those experiences and experience those before you'll allow yourself to be angry. You follow? Yep. And in particular, you believe it's very, very bad to be angry with women. Right, this is a big, big thing for you. So you're going to have to experience some of your anger with women. You've done a lot of pandering, as has Alan, with women, and uh, and you've allowed that pandering to continue over many periods of time. Many women have been right treated you very badly uh, as a result, and um, and now there's a build up of anger about how you've been treated. Right, but now what you're trying to do is suppress that anger. Right, because you don't feel that it's a spiritual thing to feel it, but you, but you need to feel it. Yep. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yep. Okay, if we go back to up the back, uh, Kerry. Thank you. Um, AJ, I know you <coughs> talked about this yesterday, but I'm I'm just not quite clear on it. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have a false fear about taking action because Sometimes I feel like I'm afraid of a certain action mm -hmm. and then when I do it, it's kind of like, oh, this is okay. Like Most people feel that way about action, actually. It's a very common thing. Most of the time, the thought of doing something is not the same as actually doing it. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much all the time, yeah. <laughs> like <Fab said. laughs> that, you know, a lot of the times we, we build things up inside of us. Now, now, the secret is to work out why you do such a thing. 
which will always have some, uh, there will always be some reason. Now, for many of us, it's things like this. We have a fear of making mistakes. And so, you know, we have a fear of looking stupid. Right? Like, for example, how many of you would like to bounce on the bouncing mat outside? Right? How many of you have actually bounced on the bouncing mat outside? Now, for all of you who don't want to bounce on the bouncing mat outside, why? It's damn good fun. <laughs> so why, <laughs> why don't you want to? What, what's the feeling you have? You tell me. Tell me what the feeling is. This helps you avoid. It helps you avoid action. What are the feelings that you have about why you don't want to do it? So let's bring the mic down to Vera. Thank you. So I'm still answering your question, Kerry. I'm afraid of getting motion sick and making a so scene. You're so you're afraid of either physical sickness or some kind of injury. How many would you would classify as afraid of getting injured or afraid of some physical Not sickness? Not injured, it's the nausea and the losing... You so you, you're afraid of the feeling of nausea? Yeah. Okay, what else? So it's a physical response, you're afraid of any physical response, what else? But like, how many of you have not done it? Can we just have hands? Okay, you, you must know why you haven't done it. So you tell me. <laughs> so come down here, let's go to Owen and, and Neil next to each other. Um, I've had the shoulder injury and I'm scared that it will exacerbate it. Okay, afraid of a past injury being harmed. Well, it's still here now. Yes, yeah. okay, yep. Yeah. Well, about 20 years ago, I tried to do a somersault and just about broke my neck. Yes, and, yes. Uh, so By the way, don't yeah. try to do a somersault on the mat <laughs> if you've never done one before. <laughs> That's what I tried, you know. Because the mat is far less forgiving than a trampoline. Ah, uh, okay. All right, so... There you go. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm afraid to... But that doesn't stop you from jumping. Right, okay. Well, maybe I'll try. No. Well, I'm not saying you have to, I'm no, just no. saying. <laughs> Can you see how past experiences, so all of a sudden we've now got two things. One is afraid of either emotional or physical personal harm. The second is past experiences have influenced our choice to do it now. So that means we haven't released the past experience. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. The past experience is not, has not been released. Right. Yeah? Right. Yep. And Bruce, you were going to say? Um, we're not staying here, so I didn't think it was right, but it's funny because someone else said they weren't staying here. I said, so and, what? Just and they did jump it. on if you want. <laughs> exactly. so I haven't, so I, yeah. Just, yeah, I just sort of haven't. Yeah. So, so what's that about? See, I, I'd just go and ask them, look, I'm not staying here, but we haven't, we're here for the thing, but I, I'd really like to have five minutes on your mat. Can I have five minutes on your mat? Yeah, I don't know. I'd probably just go and do it, but I just haven't. I don't know. I haven't given myself time to do it. More. Yeah, see, I, I feel... There's more to it than that. Oh, it's got to be more to it. Uh, let's, let's go. Come down to Louise. Um, yeah, I'm a bit the same. I'm not staying here. And, and it never occurred to me to jump on it. But I think now I think of it right now. I have resistance. You imagine yourself now. You're 10 years old. Yeah. And mum and dad brought you here. And you weren't staying here. Do you think it would occur to you to jump on it then? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but look... I think um, when I was little, you know, I shut down a lot of stuff. My sister was dying when I was three and stuff. And yeah. I just have resistance to childish, I'll put it, use that word, yeah. sort of things. Like yeah. I, had, yeah. I tried to play with my kids, you know, games and stuff, card That's games. That's why I brought up the illustration of when issues. you were 10. Like, what yeah. would you do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the reality is you've been suppressed from a fairly young age to enjoy yourself doing, like, physically enjoyable things. I was just told to shut up and... Be invisible. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So past event again, not released. Be straight back to Karina. Um, I have uh, been told I have osteoporosis, which I've created. Yeah. And as far as I can feel, it's just that I believe from childhood that I'm very weak and I can't um, cope with things. So you. So because of that, now there's a, also the internal belief emotionally, which actually causes osteoporosis yeah. is is that I am internally weak of some somehow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm scared 
of scared of harming yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. If we go back, Cheryl. Yeah, I've looked at it, and I I, I haven't gone yet because I would have felt self-conscious, but I'm I'm going to do it. So I'm this is a good one, self-conscious. Yeah. How many of you would have felt self-conscious? Like other people look at you doing it, and they go, judge you. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the thing that influences, like the looking stupid thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joy, thanks. Uh, my balance is not great. Yep. Um, and I get on the big trampoline with all the little children yeah. and just their movement on it is enough for me to just <laughs> stand there. to throw there. you off. <laughs> yeah. And they can't understand why I just stand there and laugh and laugh and they're like, what are you laughing at, Nana? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Yeah. So my guess is... So I'm your fear of not being able to maintain your balance and what might happen as a result. Yes, and I'll just laugh and yep. people will ridicule me. Yeah, so can you see in amongst that little sample... There's quite a lot of reasons for not taking an action that are not really a reason that you didn't want to do it. You follow me? They're just all sorts of reasons. And, and most of them, like if you cast your mind back to being, you know, 10 or something and seeing something like that, you'd be going, I want to get on that. How can I <laughs> manipulate mum and dad? <laughs> it's, it's, it's usually the way it goes to get on that, you know, even if I'm not staying here or whatever. And, and this, is, this is how we change, you see, when it comes to taking action, isn't it? We go from, from, from this feeling that, uh, that we're really enthusiastic to do something and to us, it's, you know, there's no impediment, is there, in, as a child. You think you come in here as a child, you look at that and you go, you know, there's no impediment in me getting on that, you know, aside from my mum and dad and, and, and the bosses of the place, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're the only two impediments and what you do then is convince them that you, you, you do need to go on it, right? <laughs> and, and, and yet when we're an adult, we, we, we need to be convinced to do it. <laughs> the exact opposite, right? We need to be, all of the things that we list, oh, I could hurt myself, I've hurt myself in the past, I, I, I've done a somersault when I shouldn't have, <laughs> and, and so forth. And by the way, somersaults are not easy to do, so don't go, <laughs> don't, don't go doing it on it. You need to know what you're doing. I've done somersaults since I'm six years old, so I'm used to it. But, but you know, just be careful because you can really badly hurt your neck and break your neck if you're not careful. So that's why they actually say you shouldn't be doing it on there. But, but the reality is we have to be convinced as adults to do something that's joyful, that as a child, we didn't need anybody to convince us of that at all. Right? Yeah. And I feel that that is a great summary, I feel, for this fear of action issue. We, as adults, <coughs> our fears have added up to a mountain. So, so as a child, you know, they've got very little past experience of getting harmed. And even if they did get harmed in the past by some physical experience, they've generally cried. You know, they've generally processed the emotion and let it go. And so, so the child's enthusiastic about doing something that as an adult we feel, no, that's just dangerous, I'm not going to do that or that. I can't do that because of how other people will judge me or I can't do that because of how, how it might feel or I can't do that for whatever reasons. And, we, and as an adult, we've got 50 reasons, right? And as a child, you've got to give us a reason like to not do it and even then it's going to be pretty hard to stop us. <laughs> Right? And this is where we change with regard to action. We become afraid of taking action for lots of reasons and we need to confront those particular reasons. Yeah.